Eu tô sentado aqui numa cadeira impressa em 3D, ele também, e a gente tá na 3D Wasp e a gente vai conhecer essa empresa fantástica. Bora lá! We are 3D Wasp, we are a 3D printing company based in uh, uh, Avena, Italy, and uh, I will say we are kind of uh, an out-of-the-box uh, enterprise in a way, because our main goal is not to uh, just make the printers, but our idea is uh, to develop technologies that can really have an impact on uh, social and environmental matters. The company first approached the 3D printing when it wasn't even a company in a way, it was just uh, a game with uh, these uh, two little toys. So this is uh, a printer from the Repra project uh, that I like to call the atomic bomb of the uh, 3D printing industry because uh, the idea of uh, developing open source, affordable, easy to use uh, um, 3D printing um, has changed the 3D printing as we know it uh, nowadays, right? This was the printing plate. You can see the, the dimension. So basically what happened is that uh, these people started to thinking Can we do something more than this? Can we develop something bigger? And uh, they started playing around with printers. Okay, so this guy here is the Power Wasp, first project uh, and the product uh, commercially available from uh, Wasp uh, as a company. Uh, and it was in uh, 2012. Um, the idea was making a 3D printer that uh, was built with uh, easy and affordable materials. Everything was built in CNC. And the printing plate was huge for the time. Just look at this, at the dimension, it's something like an A4 plate and it can also move around. So it was a, a massive printer for that, uh, for that time. And what was even cooler is that it was not even only a 3D printer. So this is the filament uh, extrusion module, but it could also use this kit for printing uh, ceramics and fluid with a syringe. And it could also assemble a milling tool. So basically it was like a small pocket laboratory that you could fit in your lab. And this is very important because it's probably the first Delta Kinematics model developed by Wasp. Today, most of the products we develop are based on the Delta Kinematics, which is very cool. Um, if you don't know, Delta Kinematics is basically a way of moving around the machine, which a uh, huge advantage. Uh, every movement is distributed on uh, the different uh, axes. So basically you can, uh, support very heavy, bare, bare heavy weights without uh, um, the machine suffering too much of these movements, or you can use a lightweight extruder to move very fast. Okay, so flash forward, we are in 2023, 10 years later, uh, this is what uh, our data printers have become. So basically the market uh, moved, uh, evolved, and now 3D printing is very popular. So um, we evolved with it, and today we are able to supply large format printers. So this is a printer that can print 60 centimeter per one meter. And it features a very advanced extrusion system that is working not from filaments, but from pellets. So this is a filament for 3D printing. A lot of you probably are popular with this kind of stuff. This stuff is produced from here, from pellets. So this is the raw source that uh, polymers are produced. And uh, what is very interesting about it is that uh, they can be uh, purchased for a very affordable, affordable price. Sometimes they can cost uh, 20%, 10% of the cost of the filament. And we can access so many materials, including technical grades, recycled grades. And this is very important for making innovation with materials. This one, for example, is a product that was created by 3D printed with uh, granules recycled from uh, uh, wasted bottles. Um, the bottles are created in a very precious material, which is PET. And um, by recompounding it and uh, printing it, we can shape it into a new beautiful product. So our goal is to develop technologies that are a part of the solutions, not part of the problem in a way. And this is a constant work because working with recycled grades, it's not easy and requires a constant update and the new technologies in order to do it efficiently and in a good way. So this is, for example, the pellets that were used for this kind of process. And uh, what is very cool is that the extruder is massive and it can melt a huge quantity of it in the time So for example, we can build something like this in five to six hours, which is uh, incredibly fast compared to filament printing. Our filament printing line has evolved during the years with an enclosed chamber in order to be able to print technical materials because that's what, what you need when you go into the actual production. Some materials are easy to print, but are good only for prototyping or uh, no professional application. This way we can process very specific materials. For example, 
This is a, a very flexible TPU. It's a, a short ATA, but we can go down to 50A for very flexible stuff like gaskets or toolings for the healthcare industry. With the same machines, you can see we can print stuff like uh, uh, scolio braces and uh, uh, customized devices thanks to the capability of digital manufacturing to create with a low cost uh, custom shapes for each print. WASP was one of the pioneers in the technology of 3D printing ceramic materials by extrusion. And uh, this started as a first experimentation when we had in our mind to print something way bigger. We wanted to print houses with uh, natural material, soil. And soil is not much different from uh, clay, if you think about it. So what we did was like uh, thinking about uh, scaling down all of this. Luckily, we are in an area in Italy uh, very famous for porcelain and uh, um, craftsmanship on ceramics. So we took advantage of that and we developed the technology for 3D printing these incredible uh, cool things in uh, ceramics. This, for example, is uh, printed in uh, clay with the glazing outside that is giving it with this uh, nice effect. And you can also see that 3D printing can create this kind of textures, effects, uh, or um, complexity in the geometries that is normally very difficult to achieve by end. And uh, it's uh, even more amazing that we can do this and uh, get this to be repeatable. And this is a um, huge step forward. I really like this technology because I think it's a meeting point between uh, digital manufacturing and uh, craftsmanship and art. Because uh, we are going to meet uh, people working with their hands and we are going to use a material which is not specially developed for 3D printing. We are basically taking the same exact material we use in pottery and uh, uh, use it uh, through the extrusion of our 3D printer. You can see some examples here. We can print porcelain, we can print clay. But what is even cooler is that we are starting to work more and more with the non-ceramic materials, for example, wood, for example, mycelium. And uh, these uh, materials have the potential to be replacement for so many uh, toxic and fossil-based material in the future. So we believe that uh, this technology could be a key improvement in the development of uh, more sustainable manufacturing. So this is a printed wall with natural material. You can see that the structure is uh, not uh, similar to what we're used to when we see bricks uh, or concrete. And uh, this is because with a printer, we can shape the wall into a um, um, shape that has some uh, information and has some function. For example, here we have a space where we can put some structural elements like this timber, but we can also put inside stuff uh, for uh, making uh, the house function, for example, these uh, pipes. What is even cooler is that we are using these uh, uh, natural fibers discarded from the rice uh, to have uh, um, superior insulation uh, performance. So um, in the end, this uh, technology allow us to use something very sophisticated, like digital manufacturing, to use a very old construction material. We tend to think that the soil is not a construction material, but is actually probably the first that humankind started building with. And today we want to reconnect with this um, using the most advanced technologies because we can get um, a way of making housing in a more sustainable, efficient and uh, democratic way. So since the beginning, uh, our real goal was actually a bit bigger than, uh, uh, I will say, a news 3D printing company. So our idea was uh, working for uh, developing a technology for 3D printing houses in natural material. So take the soil from the ground and make it into a house. So uh, today I'm talking to you in our park where we actually are making this happen day by day. And uh, this big boy there is uh, uh, the big Delta 12 meters. It's something we developed uh, uh, in uh, 2015. At the time it was the biggest 3D printer in the world. And uh, this was uh, very important for us as a milestone because it motivated us. Uh, a lot of people came from uh, all the world to see what was happening, if this could be something possible. And the idea of 3D printing with sustainable manufacturing was something uh, very interesting at the time, and now it's becoming real. I'm in front of Gaia. This was printed in 2018, so it's now five years. During the printing of this house, we completely redesigned our printing technology. So it's not looking like this anymore. It's way more compact. We have a printer that is called the Crane Wasp, and it's basically uh, way easier to work with that. And it was possible to collect uh, material from the ground. So behind this building, there is a pond where we collected the material that was processed and shaped into this house. Then we have a timber roof so that we can protect the walls from the rain and stuff. And now it's in perfect quality after five years. What happens is that if you take off the roof, 
probably after a few years, it will start degrading and get back to its original shape. So we can find a way to build uh, these houses and not leave a trace uh, after they will be abandoned. Okay, so as you can see, this is the inner of Gaia. Uh, this is directly as it's printed. You can actually see the layers you commonly see on small printers, but this is uh, the in big size, right? Um, here below, we have some finishing and it's also made with uh, um, natural materials. You can see you can get it very smooth and robust. You actually could do this all on the inner and you could do it also on the outside if you need it. Uh, and this is generally done by hand. Um, what is interesting is that in a structure like this, actually the 3D printed part is uh, not the expensive uh, part of the house. Um, when we built this, we estimated uh, the cost of the printed part around uh, one to 2,000 euros. And then the main cost of the structure is actually in the floor, in the timber and in the, in the glass uh, of the structure. So what we think uh, it's very interesting is that in a scale up uh, model, this could be in the future a very sustainable way of housing, not only in an environmental point of view, but also in an economical point of view. So um, that's, I think, uh, uh, one of the main points of using uh, our technology for printing. This, of course, needs a lot of work. So what we are doing right now, we are in, uh, um, in the process of uh, uh, sharing this uh, work with a lot of people, um, with our customer, with uh, uh, universities, with the uh, research institutes working with us. Uh, but I think we all have a common point that everyone believes in the dream of a more sustainable housing. We want to um, use this energy uh, to go all together to this goal of uh, being able to develop this kind of technology and the other technologies I showed you um, so that we can get a good impact uh, on the world with the technology and not uh, uh, to uh, keep on uh, creating waste and creating problems. So that's uh, basically our philosophy, our goal. And uh, we hope to be able to do that uh, way more in the future when we and we can grow together with other people. Thank you for the sharing knowledge. If someone wants to uh, talk to you, a little more about your company, where can they? Yeah, tech. you can. Uh, um, uh, of course, you can see everything we do online. So we are on uh, all the social media, and we can find all the information on our website uh, www. <laughs> that uh, yeah. okay. <laughs> let, let, let's make it, uh, can you make it uh, this one? <laughs> and um, and basically you can contact us. So there is some emails, depending you are interested in uh, uh, buying a printer or uh, uh, talking about a project or uh, uh, anything, you can get in contact with us uh, via mail and we can uh, definitely exchange uh, ideas and see what's possible to do together. You Thank you so much, Julio. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. See you next time.